The 1990s were a special time. They brought us a lot of things as far as role-playing games go. One of them being Big Eye Small Mouth, which I mentioned briefly in my review of OVA. Well, since the company that made Big Eye Small Mouth, Guardians of Order, had a really impressive collection of books that they released in their run, I decided that we should spend some time looking over those. So, with all that said, today we're going to be looking at Big Eye Small Mouth 1st Edition and 2nd Edition. Let's get to it. The best place to start with Big Eye Small Mouth is 1st Edition. I've heard rumors of there being kind of a zero edition of this floating around, where all the rules were condensed to just a single page. The closest I was ever able to find of that, though, was a booklet that was less than 25 pages in length explaining the absolute basics of Big Eye Small Mouth and the Tristat system. That booklet was released sometime after Big Eye Small Mouth 1st edition, though. But I digress. Whether it was done before or not, this game's rules are simple enough to fit on one page. The crux of the game, as well as the Tristat system, is that every non-combat action falls under one of three stats, mind, body, or soul. You roll two dice, and you're trying to roll beneath the relevant stat. Combat, however, uses a separate set of statistics, attack combat value and defense combat value. Attack combat value is based on the average of all three of your stats, and defense is your attack minus two. The actual flow of combat had quite a few options, but everything fit conveniently into a small little flowchart. These are the highlights. If it's your turn in the initiative, you can attack, do some other action, wait to act later, or attack somebody with your mind. Mind combat wasn't always going to be an option though, since you needed a special ability in order to do that. Physical combat, however, was always much more likely to happen, and it worked like so. An attacker declares who they're attacking, rolls two dice, and they try to meet or go underneath their attack combat value. If they do, their attack is successful. This is what makes combat in Big Eye Small Mouth unique. Your character's ability to hit a target depends almost exclusively on themselves. Granted, the defender has an opportunity to negate the attack with a defense value combat roll. Their success in this roll naturally means that the attack does nothing. Under most circumstances though, you only get to do this once per round, regardless of how many times you are attacked. This brings us to the remainder of this game's rules, the special attributes. There's a total of 26 special attributes, and most of them are pretty straightforward. They're rated on a scale of 1 to 5, and each level in the attribute costs so many character points, depending on how powerful that attribute is. With a few exceptions, you can expect most of the abilities to follow this formula. It grants a bonus equal to the level of the ability, and any other more open-ended advantages the ability grants follow a pretty specific formula. Here we have the mechanics for the attribute Item of Power and of Unique Character Attribute. As you no doubt notice, despite their difference in wording, the meaning is pretty much identical. This sort of repetition isn't necessarily a bad thing. In fact, patterns in RPGs are usually a good thing since it makes it easier to guess how something might work without needing to refer back to the book as often. The only flaw I can think of with this presentation is that there's some lacking context of what constitutes small, moderate, or good advantage. The last set of rules I'm yet to talk about are character flaws, but these follow a lot of the same rules and principles as abilities except they work in reverse, and on a smaller scale. There's less listed flaws, and they each have only two levels. So I think I've gone on long enough about the rules, let's actually take a look at the book itself. and. Right off the bat, you can tell that this is kind of like a first run, like someone's first uh, project that they've done. That they've done. You've got like a really busy picture in the front with a lot of. Uh, that, that looks like someone's fan art of just generic anime characters from the 1990s, and there's also like a discoloration right here. This part is lighter than this part right here. And on the back, we've got same error right here. Like, there's a discoloration from like right here and here to here. And they've also got a very str uh, kind of a weird-looking logo right there. They don't ever use that in any other others, any other other works. And some more discoloration here and here. And inside, we've got mostly. Black, it's all black and white images in the print copies of the game. And a lot of it also looks like it's just line art. We got 
filled out character sheet right here. There's the flowchart of combat. And this image right here is black and white, but in the PDF of the rulebook, this is actually in color, so that's a bit of a... So, I honestly feel better of, like, if all of it is either black and white or if some of it is just... If, I, I prefer it all being one uniform black and white or all color. I don't really like it being mixed up. So I much prefer the print copy of this book than the PDF. And much like any game from like the late 90s, from like early to late 90s, there's lots of charts. And... So you have just simple artwork right there of someone's eyes. I don't really know what that's supposed to, uh, what that's supposed to, what that's supposed to be, what it's supposed to mean, whatever. It's just, it's just line art of someone's eyes. And on the reverse you have sort of like a, a more, much more detailed grayscale image, but once again, in the PDF, this is colored. And it's, it's a very simply laid out book. I, for what it is, it's, for what it is, it's not bad. Because this this book is almost 20 years old now, and the 1990s they were a much different time. It was much harder to like, it was much harder to do a small scale printing of your of like some fan project. They didn't have print on demand until fairly recently, actually. Yeah, that looks like that, that looks like it could be colored or uh, black and white. I don't really know which it would be. And some of the anatomy in these pictures is just weird. Like his head looks like it's sh like it's way smaller than it should be, or maybe it's bigger than it should be. I don't know. Something about this this particular image right here just doesn't sit well with me. Well, let's see if we can find that comic again. Yeah, I don't even really know what the plot of this is, other than someone just well needs water. Just seems like something they threw in just for the sake of it. It's a little, a little out of context. Like a lot of the images here. And then there's a glossary of all sorts of different, all sorts of different terms that an anime fan would probably already know, because I think that was like the original market for this. Bibliography, a list of a whole bunch of different anime that was really popular in the 1990s. I've actually watched most of these. <laughs> See, we got Dragon Ball, Fist of the North Star, Ghost in the Shell, uh, Mermaid Forest, I read that, I watched that one, Ninja Scroll, Record of Lotus War, one of my, one of my favorites that I like to point out to people, and Usenet groups. Th those don't even exist anymore. We don't use, we don't use Usenet groups anymore. And oh my god, that is a lot of Usenet groups. I think those were like taken over by Yahoo or something. And then there's just three websites on the World Wide Web. Three websites on the World Wide Web. So this this book, it's not the it's not the like the highest quality book, and it's honestly not the best game around anymore. But I'm pretty sure for its time, it was a really novel concept. New edition is kind of a confusing term in the RPG world. It used to mean updated and maybe expanded rules, but somewhere along the line it meant same name, different game. Dungeons & Dragons is one of the most well-known offenders of this. Big Eye Small Mouth was around long enough to experience both of these phenomenon, with the normal and revised second edition of the game being expansion and clarification. With a little bit of work, it was still entirely possible to use a character from the first edition of the game in the second. So with that said, I don't really need to reiterate the rules. Most of them remained pretty much the same. In fact, in some cases, the text is identical still. Some of the minor changes were that new attributes were added, giving your character more concrete options. The level cap of attributes was also raised from 5 to 6, and more specific examples besides such and such kind of advantage were written into the attribute level examples. There was still some significant changes to the game between editions, an optional skill system was added that represented mundane abilities, and the special attack and own a giant mech attributes were expanded, giving more definition over what it meant to have some special means of fighting or accomplishing things. 
So here we've got the rule book for the second edition. My particular copy of it is a revised edition, which was released a few years after the second edition was. And the only thing that really changed from the revised edition and the second edition was that the revised edition was made a little bit smaller, as in, like, it wasn't as thick. It still had the pretty much the same word count, and the cover is blue, has a blue background instead of a green, and instead of a green one, like in the original second edition. Now, the cover artwork remains the same, this, as in from the uh, second edition and the revised edition. It's still busy, but it's not as busy, and there's a lot more, and there's a lot more pleasing details in this one than there is in the first edition rule copy of the rule book artwork. And looks like someone named Christopher Clark used to own this copy. So thank you, Christopher Clark. I'm now using your your uh, book in my video, whoever you are, wherever you are. So and they also made a lot of just numerous changes. You can really tell that uh, Guardians of Order was really growing as a company when you look at their first edition rulebook and their second edition rulebook. Because you got a nice three, like a nice three color gradient going here. They've got, and they use a more, they use a different typeface. They actually won, they actually were nominated for some award, for some or, uh, awards with Origins. And they have some much more, they don't have the same errors that they had when they were making their first edition, when they were inserting like their logos and stuff, logos and images and stuff. And they also have a convenient little like little marks on the edge for you know what uh, where the next section is just by thumbing through on the side. Like right here, we're in attributes. They also gave a different layout to everything. It's much more structured. And let me see if I can find some of the artwork. The artwork is a little bit more sparse because there's more like stat blocks and stuff and okay I don't know I don't know what's wrong with her eye there this was a bad example but much like in first edition a lot of the artwork in the print book is grayscale but if you look in the PDF this image right here it would be colored it would be colored in so So some of the artwork is still a little weird looking, but it's much it's much more detailed and a bit more pleasing to look at if you ask me. And they also had more art t artwork talent in this one, I think. Like they had more people working on the artwork. There's also a lot of new a lot of new charts and stuff. <laughs> Okay, I kind of like that one, but it, it, her, where, where's her eye? Her eye, that, that, that pose looks weird. Where's that at him? I don't know. <laughs> easily distracted. I'm easily distracted. Anyways, uh, da, 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 let's see some more. There's really not much else to say, but other than it was a definite, the second edition was a definite improvement. They, add, they added a lot more to it as a game, and they also added a lot more just in general. Like, they, like, there was more production quality that went into it. Of course, technology probably also improved for smaller scale print operations. Their giant listing of... Their giant listing of anime just got even longer, including some, some popular ones from, like, the late 90s, like Cowboy Bebop, and... Uh, Akira was another popular one. Fist of the North Star is still in there. Uh, let's see. Dragon Half. That was one that came out much later. I don't think that was in the original one. So, yeah. And they still have some... They still have the listing of Usenet groups and World Wide Web pages. But they consolidated it to less... Uh, to less page space. Which, that's one of the things in general I think that they did. So yeah, this is a second edition rulebook. Not as much to say, but it's it's got a much higher print quality. They put they had put more effort into the design. Put, there was more effort put into the artwork, and you could tell that they were really growing as a company at this point. Oh god, that's a long list. <laughs> <laughs> All 
but it still has it's still pretty much the same game. They just consolidated and added a bunch of rules, to, a bunch of rules that they had been developing through like all their splats and whatnot over the course of it. So yeah, that is second edition Big Eye Small Mouth. So there you have it, Big Eye Small Mouth first and second edition. They came about at a special time in the 1990s, when both role-playing games and Japanese animation were hitting a new height in popularity. They kind of stand the test of time as a nice universal role-playing system that can handle any feasible setting. Although, I would personally still rather play a game that was meant for a particular setting. Now, as I said at the start of this video, Guardians of Order released a lot of books in their 20 or so years run, and I intend on covering as many of them as that I have. So, with all that said, I am Aaron Dershadel, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching, and if you liked this video, I'd appreciate it if you clicked the little like button, wherever it might be. Or if it even still exists. Who knows, you might be watching this on some illegal bootleg DVD, and they forgot to cut this part out. And if you want to watch the rest of this series, subscribing might be a good idea if you already aren't subscribed to my channel. I'm pretty sure there's a button for that somewhere too. Unless you're, you know, watching this on a bootleg DVD.